and how exactly will this scheme benefit India's mining sector? We now have the management of IREL, Indian Rare Earth Limited. Mr. Sarda Bhushan Mohanty, Director Finance and CMD at IREL is now joining us. Mr. Mohanty, afternoon and thank you so much for taking your time out and joining us here on ET now. So the centre has now approved 7,300 crore scheme to boost rare earth permanent magnet manufacturing in India. Your initial thoughts on this, what does this mean for India's rare earth mining industry? The scheme is uh, important because actually earlier also uh, in any kind of this uh, industry, there are uh, three different st uh, streams, upstream, midstream and uh, the downstream. When in India particularly, uh, this upstream IREL is well equipped starting from the mining to making up to the level of oxides. It is all available, uh, varietals as well as uh, everything is available with IREL. Whereas uh, the midstream, uh, although in 2021, uh, there was a PLI scheme announced by the government of India. So that was uh, available for incremental sales, uh, rare or permanent migrate for EVs uh, was included in that list. Uh, this advanced automatic uh, te technology. So under that, uh, then no applicant was uh, applied for the, this uh, rare earth permanent magnet for motors. So now, uh, if you calculate this disability, uh, when we are selling the rare earth oxide, uh, the price uh, suppose $65 uh, per kg, the same price is sold by uh, China also. But when making up the metal particularly, uh, because in the process, first is uh, the from the rare earth, rare earth oxide, it has to be converted to metal metal to alloys and alloys after this uh, magnets are made. So if you see in this process, the price of NDPR oxide uh, of China and India are same. Although this uh, this metal in China, if it is $78, then uh, this India, it, it will be around $100. So that is a difference of $24. So similarly, in the process of manufacturing this technological raw, tea, then raw material price, and other consumables, if all these will be factored, there is a disability of around clear disability of 43%. So unless until this 43% is getting uh, somehow incentivized, so no industry will come. So that is why this scheme is very, very important. And it is one of the scheme, which is uh, in line with uh, the, the the concept vision of Pixit Bharat, particularly technologically that it will be self-reliant globally will be competitive as well as it's a sustainable uh, industrial uh, base. Okay, so the scheme is very important for India's mining industry. That's the word coming in. But Mr. Mohanty, I understand that the rare earth mining also has a long gestation period. And the scheme also says that uh, it will have a total duration of about seven years. What's the realistic timeline before domestic production actually fills in the current import gap? I understand that we've been importing a lot of rare earth minerals at this point in time. How soon? Will India be able to manufacture and mine rare earth minerals in India itself? See, the, it has been the scheme has emphasized for a period of seven years. Out of the two years uh, gestation period will be there. This seven year uh, period will be counted from the date of the letter of uh, uh, award. So, uh, suppose today is the letter of award. After two years, we'll be in a position to produce. And those industries who can, who, who can uh, fast track it, they will be getting additional incentive of 20% in the first year itself. And uh, if they will make, be making it in the second year, then they will be getting 10% additional feature along with this sales as well as the CapEx subsidy. Okay, so that's as far as the gestation period and the total duration is concerned. But Mr. Mohanty also wanted your thoughts on the near-term hiccups and hurdles that the industry is facing. I understand with the temporary US-China licensing relief, which is currently in place, how vulnerable is India to similar supply disruptions in the next 18 to 24 months before actually we start producing uh, rare earth minerals in India? When it started from April 2025, initially China stopped this uh, new rare earth uh, elements, uh, particularly five elements, which is required for migrant making. And thereafter, in November, another uh, seven, total together 12. And along with that, they have also stopped this uh, export of this technology as well as the capital equipments. 
on this front it is uh, currently all in a sudden we cannot increase our capabilities for my migrant making so of course it has to be imported so we have to uh, a country has to depend uh, initially for this uh, migrant making and also there are certain industries that have come up in india those uh, maybe december or somewhere they are planning to produce some 500 ton has been planned by some of the indian manufacturers uh, so uh, if it will come then uh, gradually it, it has to be wrapped up all on a sudden the, the capability cannot increase if you see IREM, we have already having this samarium cobalt there are two type of rpm magnets this uh, RIP, uh, this uh, samarium cobalt magnet is being made by us but it is used for the uh, strategic use uh, not for the uh, commercial purpose so NDFE boron magnet, uh, which is uh, this remanence and as well as the, uh, the the resistivity to get demagnetized is very high. So for that purpose, this NDFE boron magnet is very, very important. But for that, uh, it will take time. Maybe two years down the line, it can be done. And 2029-30 with this scheme, uh, many players will come around. In, it is envisaged uh, the demand for NDAP boron magnet currently is 4,000 ton, which will be doubled by 2030. And uh, by that time, uh, it will be self-reliant. And uh, the capability, not only these five elements with this uh, subsidy will come up, there are many other industries will also come up looking at this uh, scheme. The ecosystem will be developed at that point of time. So 2029-30, uh 30 31 that time this india will be self-reliant okay so india will be self-reliant by 2031 that's the word coming in uh but mr mohanty demand also continues to remain very strong when it comes to rare earth minerals whether it is from electric vehicles wind electronics defense etc so with respect to the current 6000 megawatt uh, meg uh, million tons per annum capacity target that has been set by the government do you think india will be able to meet its medium term demand or will indian government then have to ramp up its uh, schemes and ramp up production to ensure that India actually meets its uh, demand to become self-reliant? So it is actually, if you see, uh, there are, uh, in the report says, uh, and uh, around 54,000 ton of magnet has been imported to India. So in that 54,000 ton, uh, it will be directed at three different type of magnets, uh, like uh, Alnico is there, aluminum, nickel and uh, cobalt. The other one is this ferrite magnets. Those are low uh, category of magnets, which is imported in a uh, bulk. So the particularly high uh, resistivity and high uh, quality magnets, which is uh, NDAP boron magnets, that quantity has been uh, calculated and envisaged uh, to be 4,000 ton currently, which will be doubled by 2030 to 8,000 ton. So that 8,000 ton, uh, uh, India will be in a position to produce and supply to the manufacturer so that India will be self-reliant during that, that, that point of time. All right, so that's the roadmap to becoming self-reliant when it comes to rare earth minerals. Uh, but Mr. Mohanty, do you foresee any operational challenges that the industry will face in the medium term? So, uh, in this particularly, if you see, there are uh, two types of rare earth uh, there, lighter and heavier rare earth. Uh, so, the lighter rare earth Indian resource, it is plentifully available. The heavier rare earth, uh, which is uh, dysprosium and terbium, which is crucial for this magnet making, and uh, there are technology also developed uh, without using this uh, dysportium and terbium, the magnet uh, can be made. So considering that, and dysportium and terbium is not available in our country, uh, this uh, government of India has already started the initiative uh, to look for uh, this heavier rare earth from not only from this uh, this monazite source, monazite source is having only rare, uh, lighter rare earth, and carbonatite source particularly, they are having uh, this heavier rare earth, particularly this uh, Ambadonga as well as this uh, Sivana ring. These, uh, this, uh, these two resources are under uh, exploration stage and uh, when we'll be exploring those two, then the heavier rare earth can be available in the country. So that is one. That means second thing is the challenge of uh, importing this dysprosium and terbium from other countries right now. There are other suppliers are also there. It can be imported from Malaysia, Linus uh, is one. Then uh, from uh, Australia and other places, it can be imported. And we have been relying on many of these sources to import rare earth magnets. Uh, Mr. Mohan, 
Shanti, thank you so much for taking your time out and joining us here on ET Now and helping us understand how the scheme will actually benefit India's mining industry. But since Rare Earth Magnets is the bus of the town, let's tell you some interesting facts and figures and what really are Rare Earth Magnets. So Rare Earth Magnets are magnets that are made from alloys of any of the 17 Rare Earth elements. Neodymium magnets and samarium cobalt magnets are the two types of rare earth magnets and they are not rare in literal terms as they are abundantly found in earth's crust but rare because they are not found in seams and it's difficult to mine and refine them. These characteristics make them ideal to use for manufacturing companies for industrial applications, consumer products and more. Neodymium is also seen in magnetic separators, microphones, DC motors, door locks, computer components, while samarium cobalt magnets are used in generators, satellite systems, aerospace sensors, defense systems and more. China dominates the production of the world's 2 lakh tons of rare earth magnets with over 90% coming in from the country. And the curbs are threatening to create ripple effects across the globe, not just US. And India is also among one of those nations which is likely to bear the brunt. That's all the time we have on this edition of the show. Thanks so much for tuning in, but more news and updates will continue on the other side.